Hello again, dear listeners. Yes, you've guessed it. It's already time for another edition of Ask Uncle Ben. I've had a lot of questions come in the last couple of hours, so let's get straight down to it, shall we, madam? Yes. Now, the first question, here we go. Dear Carbuncle Ben. A little bit of confusion there, I feel. Anyway, if the Earth is really billions of years old, then why is it only 2016? Also, how come meteors always land perfectly in the craters? Yours sincerely, God. Oh, always nice to hear from you, God. How are you doing? Um, I'm surprised such basic questions are coming from you, God, but then I am the fountain of all knowledge, or the fanta of all nonsense, or something like that. So yes, uh, fair enough. Anyway, um, well, the Earth is billions of years old, but no one thought to start counting until quite recently, unfortunately. Hence why it's only 2016, or about quarter past eight. Also, you have to remember that the 2016 bit is AD, or after dinner. There's also a whole bit before that that was BC, you know, before clocks. So remember that. And as for meteors, well, they always land perfectly in their craters because the great cosmic Dennis Taylor is a bloody good shot. That's why. I hope that clears that up for you, God. Take care, won't you? Love to Jesus. Now, this next question is from Alex. Hello again, Alex. How are you? Alex says, thank you for your invaluable advice regarding my racism. As a result, I have stopped blacking up entirely. Ah, you see, that's good, Alex. Well done. You see, people can change. On a related note, Alex continues, Do you have any suggestions for what to do with four dozen corks, some fire damage, and half a large box of matches? Um, I suggest that you could find your local pond, or failing that a puddle, or failing that your bath, perhaps. Is your bath not quite fun. And you reenact the invasion of the Spanish Armada. The corks can be the ships, obviously, and you can make little masts out of the matches. And the half a matchbox can be Sir Francis Drake. For as all historians concur, I'm sure, Francis Drake looked a bit like half a matchbox. Oh, look, here comes old Francis half a matchbox Drake, they always said, didn't they? Yes. Anyway, hours of fun there. Hours of fun. A uh, question from Emma. Hello again, Emma. How are you? Uh, Dear Uncle Ben, I just dropped a slice of bread which did not land butter side down. According to all the evidence, this should not be possible. Is there a chance I should have some rare superpower? And if so, how can I use it to end war, famine, poverty, and the Kardashians? Ah, well, I'm afraid, uh, according to the Book of Revelations, uh, this may well be the end of the world. For I think it's in uh, chapter 38, verse 19, it says something like, And lo, shall Emma of the Kello fling her bread onto hallowed ground, and rest till it not with the face of butter looking upon the floor. And yea, the dead shall rise, and the sleepy shall go back to bed for a bit, and all shall become thunder, and we shall all turn to coleslaw and snuff it. But I suppose if the world doesn't end, which it might not, who knows, who knows what I do, I'm telling you. Uh, well, if it doesn't end, then perchance you do have some sort of strange superpower, and you can travel the world throwing bread onto the ground. I suppose that could help with famine a bit. A real trick, though, would be if you could throw the Kardashians onto the ground, and they landed talent side up or down. <laughs> be a miracle. Uh, next question. Dear Uncle Ben, as a newcomer to your solar system, I am very much trying to master the correct pronunciations in English so that I do not end up on a dissecting table. Very wise, very wise. The song about tomatoes and potatoes is a case in point. I recognise that there are two different pronunciations of tomatoes based on the region of Earth that you inhabit, but where do people talk of potatoes? <laughs> Additionally, I met a girl called Penelope, and I pronounced her name to rhyme with envelope. <laughs> Ah, I see, so Penelope. Penelope, envelope. I quite like Penelope. Uh, she stabbed me through what she believed to be my heart, oh dear. But in my alien form, she only punctured my appendix, which needed removing anyway. Ah, oh, good. So that was okay. Then I met a goose, of course, and his geese friends. But then I met a moose, and his friends again tried to murder me for calling them meese. Uh -huh. Then I met a mouse, and his mice friends. Then I met a grouse. And again, I was in fear for my life when I referred to them as Grice. I fear I have gone on too long, but I really would appreciate your help as the total eradication of the human race is not going to happen if we can't be convincing imposters. Yours sincerely, Overlord Tripondersalad the Third. 
<laughs> well, thank God it's not Overlord Tripons of Salad the Second. He was a complete bastard. Right, well, um, obviously we, we don't want to stop the eradication of the human race, so um, uh, I'll try and help. Uh, well, first of all, um, potatoes. Uh, potatoes. I think, you know, the same sort of people who say potatoes are the ones that say near instead of no. Nya. And uh, ears instead of yes. Ears. Um, and, of course, they don't say hello. They say air, hair, and lair. So it's air, hair, lair. That's probably them, isn't it? Potatoes. 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 Ears. Yeah, I like that. Um, they're complete tosses, generally. Uh, the English language is rather confusing, to be fair, so I don't blame you at all. What I would do, actually, thinking about it, I would just pop on a tracksuit, yes, yeah, snip to JB Sports, whatever it's called, pop on a tracksuit, and then um, carry on speaking as you were. As most people haven't got a handle on this language anyway. It'll probably stand out more if you do have a handle on it and use it correctly. So yes, I think that's probably a good idea. I do give my best to the other evil overlords, won't you? Love to Cameron and Cove and everyone. Bye-bye. Right, next question from Simon Webster Wise. Ooh, that sounds like some sort of detective, doesn't it? Or a, or a firm of solicitors or something. Or the other. Um, he says, howdy, Uncle Ben. Oh, howdy, I'd like a cowboy. No, I can't do accents. I mustn't stop it. Stop it. Um, anyway, howdy, Uncle Ben. My question is about the town of Reading in Berkshire. And that question is, why? <laughs> That's a very good question indeed, Simon. Um, well, let me give you a little bit of the history of Reading if you like, and if you don't like, I'm doing it anyway, so tough. Well, Reading was first discovered in 1974 by, well, by mistake, to be totally honest. The discoverers did try to cover it up again, but it didn't quite work, and well, there we are. It's still there. Still, could be worse, could be worse, it could be Slough or Bracknell, couldn't it? Imagine that. Bracknell. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say Bracknell without saying... <laughs> Anyway, if you'd like to know any more about the history of Reading, please do let me know. Uh, now, oh, several questions from Andy. Right, here we go. Dear Uncle Ben, question one. I liberally applied some antiseptic cream to deal with a particularly nasty case of thrush and am now being sued by the RSPB. Any advice? <laughs> yes, dear. The RSPB can be tricky blighters. I remember I had a similar issue last year sometime involving a very rare species, the red lozenge nut strangler. Anyway, uh, what I suggest you do is what I did, which is cover Bill Oddy in poisoned bird seed and push him into Epping Forest. Uh, that normally does the trick, it distracts them, they're far too busy dealing with that to deal with you. So have a go at that one. Uh, question two Was it Professor Plum with Miss Scarlet in the conservatory? Uh, no, it was Colonel Conservatory with my plums in the bins outside the back of Debenhams. Do keep up. Uh, question three from Andy. Uncle Ben, what is that hideously embarrassing and unintentionally hilarious object hidden under your bed? Well, that's my mother. Say hello, mother. Hello, mother. I'll make the jokes, thank you. You make the soup. That's always been the arrangement and it's not changing. Back under the bed. Oh, thank you. Uh, question four from Andy. Are you aware that the jolly man who whistles in the background of your blog is a convicted serial killer? <laughs> I hardly think so, Andy. I mean, really, I think I'd know if he was a serial killer, wouldn't I? After all, all he does is sit in the corner of my room, whistling all day and night, and staring at me whilst constantly grinning. Seems perfectly normal to me. It must have been, I mean, it does unnerve me slightly when his whistling gets closer and closer and closer, a bit like it is now, but after all, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all we have time for today on Ask Uncle Ben. Might be a bit of a delay before the next instalment. Keep posting your questions. Bye bye. It's Ask Uncle Whistler now. Coming to get ya, coming to get ya, coming to get ya, Uncle Whistler.